Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be doing a gear review on the tackle boxes that I use, the boxes that I store all my baits in. Um, I've used quite a few different ones, but none of them compared to the ones that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. So make sure you stay tuned. All right, guys, so uh, judging by the thumbnail on this video that you guys have probably already seen, um, you already know which boxes I'm gonna be talking about. Uh, the Plano Edge boxes uh, are the ones that I do use currently. They fit more than enough baits that I need to take with me. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is going to be the Plano Edge 3500. And uh, basically what I have with this guy is this one actually keeps all my tackle together. So from bob stops to bullet weights to 4-aught, 5-aught, 3-aught hooks, whichever ones you can fit in here. Um, they do have a pretty cool system as far as how they close. Basically, you just pull down on the top, it drops the latch down, and then the door comes open. Um, and same way to lock, you just bring it down, latch the bottom, and latch the top. This is the 3500 smaller box for, uh, version for these. Next, we have the medium size 3500 that I actually use for all my top water baits, uh, which is going to be this guy here. The size comparison, I'll show you guys here in a second, um, is pretty significant from the small box to the medium box. Uh, but once again, it does hold all of my top water baits, which is good because I don't have that many top water baits. But what I do have, uh, it fits them pretty nice. As you guys can see here, frogs, jitterbugs, poppers, whopper ploppers, all kinds of different ones you can put in this guy. Um, now the size comparison is going to be a little bit different. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference there or not. So the smaller 3500, the medium 3500. They actually do fit quite nicely. All right, so next up, let me get these guys out of the way. Next up, I do have a Plano Edge 3700 boxes. I have about five of them that I keep different baits in, just depending on what I want to take out to the lake or to the river or wherever it is I'm going to go fishing. This is a different one compared to the other ones that I have. This is the 3700, but it's the jig box. And this guy here, let me open it up, I'll show you. They all open the same um, and they close the same, so I'm not gonna get into detail with that. But this right here, so this is the jig box. It's got these columns uh, with these posts in there that you actually just slide the jig down into. Um, it does keep them in there pretty well. They have, I haven't had any come out on me uh, traveling or you know, going out to the lake or to the river with. Uh, one thing I will say is that the football, not the football, but the arrow-headed looking jigs, I forget what kind of jigs those are, um, they do not fit well in here at all. Uh, they do come out, any quarter ounce jigs will come out of these slots uh, with ease. So make sure you guys be careful with that. The last thing you wanna do is to open up your tackle box and all your jigs come spilling out. Um, every single one of these 3700 boxes come with a water wick divider. Um, so you can actually use this guy to uh, divide your boxes up in the other boxes, not this one of course. This one actually sits on the wall, it's slotted on the back, so it sits in these grooves here. Basically what the job that this guy does 
is, you know, you're out on the river, you're out on the lake, you cut your line or you cut your bait off or you cut your lure or whatever the case may be, uh, you can actually throw, like if I was using this guy here and I was fishing with him for a while, I can take him off, I can throw him right back here in the box and not have to worry about any rust or anything like that going on with the hook itself because that water wick is pretty much going to draw all that water to it and soak it on up. I know people that do reuse those. Uh, they do go that after a little while. I'm not exactly sure how expensive they are to replace, uh, but people do actually use a hair dryer on them to dry them out to reuse them again. So this is the 3700 jig box, which, I mean, if you look at it, you could put a lot of jigs in this thing and <laughs> pretty much have every jig for every situation or scenario you're going to run into out there. Um, next up, I have the 3700 box for my lipless crankbaits. I know the name's wrong on the bottom one. I haven't changed it over yet. I, I did put my chatterbaits in there, um, in that jig box, in this guy here. And they did not stay in there at all. They were moving around, falling all over each other. It was just a complete disaster. So next up, lipless crankbaits. I don't have a lot of them. Uh, I am planning on getting more. This is just what I have now. I actually have this pretty cool lipless crankbait that I picked up at, I believe it is Valley Rod and Gun in Fresno, California. And a couple other ones, mainly like the Guggen Bangers. I do have a lot of Guggen baits. This guy right here, I will tell you, he catches me a lot of fish. Perhaps one of the best lures that I do have. Um, I have the square bill version of this guy and it works tremendously well. The chartreuse tail does absolutely phenomenal work. I don't know what it is, but these fish just go crazy for it. Um, I actually haven't caught one on this rattle trap, but the square bill version I have. I haven't been able to use this guy just yet. Uh, so, but I am looking forward to it. Anyways, back to the box. So this one here, unlike the jig box, it doesn't have the post. It actually has these sliders and they pull straight out and then they go right back in. Oh, I put that one in sideways. They go right back in without a problem. Um, the one thing I will mention is when you do buy one of these, they come with so many of these dividers. Like you will for sure, guaranteed for sure, have leftover dividers to use for other boxes that you buy um but yeah it works works quite well as you could tell you can put a lot of different lipless crankbaits in this guy here i mean you have all these slots i don't even have this thing filled just with what i have so not bad at all and then uh next up same size 3700 and this one right here is for my actual true crankbaits I do have some of them doubled up, uh, but what I do have is I have a couple six cents lures. Here is that Guggen banger that I was telling you about. I do have the square bill version of it. Like I had mentioned before, this guy right here does wonders in the water. So nice to have. Um, I've got the Guggen banger red crawl. This guy is actually pretty neat. Haven't caught anything on him just yet. Uh, most of the places I go fishing, there aren't really any crawdads in the water, so I guess the fish don't know what the heck is going on. Um, I do have the Dark Series uh, Six Cents Lure. Had a couple luck on that. But, yeah, like I said, water wicks, phenomenal work. They soak up all the water for you to where you don't have to worry about it, worry about any of your hooks rusting or anything like that. Anything that you have metal inside the box, it keeps it completely safe. Um, this is a water tight seal on the lid. So if they do by chance happen to fall out of your bag or your kayak or go overboard on your boat, you can rest assured that there will be no water getting inside here besides with what is on the lures. 
Um, so if any of you guys are out there looking for some new boxes, the Plano 3700s, 3500s, and 3600s are great boxes to put all your stuff in. Um, these guys right here, the 3700s, they ran me about $25 to $28, depending on where I went, a piece. Um, the smaller ones that I showed you that had actual, well, let me grab it. This guy right here, actually, which is the one I put all my accessories in. This one right here actually ran me about, I wanna say $18. Not terribly too bad. It is a lot of money for the size, I know. And then um, this guy right here that I used for all my topwater baits. This one here ran me about 21, 22. And then uh, my jig box, which is this guy here with the posts in it. That one was a little more, that one was about 35. So they are a little bit pricey, but you do get what you pay for. And with the amount of money that I spent on these guys, I must say I am completely happy with them. I don't have any problems with them whatsoever. So if you guys are in the market looking for some, make sure you guys check these out and see if you guys like it. Um, oh yeah, and right before we go, the cool thing about these two is they do come with pre-made labels. So you can write whatever you want on the boxes as far as what your baits are gonna be inside. And with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or a rag or whatever, easily wipe those off and you're good to go. You could change the name, change the baits, whatever you gotta do. All right guys, well that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And thank you guys for all the likes and the subscriptions and the shares on my videos. I really do appreciate that. Uh, we did gain three more subscribers. So again, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping I can get to that next level with this. This is pure entertainment purpose only for this YouTube channel. Um, it is just a little bit of a hobby of mine that... I can hopefully go out there and reach somebody that hasn't been fishing or wants to get out into fishing and kind of just explain, you know, the ends and the odds to the whole fishing world. So I really do appreciate you guys. And uh, if you are new to the channel and this is your first time watching my video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell up in the corner to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks again, guys. And always get out there, rip some lips.